Chapter 6 Cognitive Development Piaget's Theory of Cognitive Development We're going to discuss the key processes and the four stages in Piaget's theory. Jean Piaget was a Swiss developmental psychologist. He was absolutely brilliant, and when he became a father, he became fascinated by his observations of his own children. While everyone else just shrugged their shoulders and thought, oh, you know, toddlers and their tantrums, they don't make any sense, who knows what they're thinking, Piaget set out to discover actually exactly that. What are children thinking? How does their thinking develop, and how do those changes, you know, how do those changes occur? Piaget proposed that as children try to understand the world around them, they start to build what he called mental schemes. Schemes are kind of like concepts. They're actions and mental representations that organize knowledge. They start out simple, like, what is a dog? Or, what happens when I drop something? And then as children get older, their schemes include strategies and plan, you know, you know, plans for problem solving, like, how should I act if I want to be polite? This is how Piaget thought this process worked. Let's say that a toddler has a Dalmatian for a pet, and the child has learned that their pet is what is called a dog. Okay, cool. So a dog has four legs and a tail, and it's black and white, you know, it has black and white spots. Um, if a child sees a Dalmatian in a book or at the park and says, dog, then the parents will go, yes, that is a dog. So the child has a mental scheme of what a dog is, and so far, so good. But then they see a yellow lab. Hmm, but, you know, it has four legs and a tail, so the child points and says, dog. And the parents go, yes, see the dog? Oh, okay, so the dog doesn't have to have black and white spots. They can be different colors and sizes, too. So this new information is just adding to their already existing idea or concept or scheme of a dog. This process is called assimilation. They're just filing this information away in an already existing folder, dog. But then one day the child sees a cow. Oh, four legs, a tail, black and white spots, dog, they cry out. No, that's a cow. Wait, what? Cow? What's a cow? Why isn't it a dog? It has all the criteria. What's different about it? Oh, okay, it's bigger, and it has udders, and hooves, and it eats grass. Now they're adjusting and making a new scheme, a new folder, one for the concept of cow. And this process is called accommodation. Once they've made this mental adjustment, everything makes sense in the world again. Over time, this process helps them switch from one stage of cognitive development to the next, which Piaget referred to as equilibration. These are the four stages of cognitive development that Piaget proposed we go through. The sensory motor stage, the pre-operational stage, the concrete operational stage, and the formal operational stage. Each stage is characterized by how the child mentally interacts with the world and what milestone mental abilities they achieve while in that stage. The first stage is the sensory motor stage, which is from birth to around two years old. This is called the sensory motor stage because the infant constructs an understanding of the world by physically interacting with it. Think about what babies and toddlers do all the time. They grab things, they put things in their mouth, they scream randomly, they bang things against other things, they fling their food. They are coordinating their sensory experiences with their physical motor actions. What does this feel like or taste like? What sound does it make when I do this? Ooh, everyone turned and looked at me when I did that. Oh, that's interesting. A lot happens in the first two years of life. So Piaget divided this sensory motor stage into six substages. These six substages are simple reflexes, first habits and primary circular reactions, secondary circular reactions, coordination of secondary circular reactions, tertiary circular reactions, novelty and curiosity, and internalization of schemes. I'll go through each of these and the weird names will make sense in a little bit. 
The first substage is simple reflexes. Here, we're talking about a newborn baby with zero understanding of the world. The baby interacts with the world primarily through innate reflexes. For example, if you put your finger in a newborn baby's hand, they will wrap their fingers around your finger. If you touch their mouth with a bottle or pacifier, they will reflexively open their mouth and start sucking. They're not doing this consciously or intentionally. It's just a reflex. The second substage is called first habits and primary circular reactions, which develops between one and four months. Here, a habit, when they say a habit, it's something that used to be a reflex that has now become intentional, that has become under the baby's control. And circular reaction is just a fancy way of saying that they're doing it over and over and over again. For instance, at some point, the baby may have unintentionally brought their foot up to their mouth and reflexively sucked on their foot. Between one and four months of age, the baby starts intentionally trying to coordinate their motor movements in an attempt to get their foot into their mouth so they can suck on it. And the word primary refers to the fact that in all of this, the baby's focus is on their own body. Think primary like first person perspective in writing. I, me. They're just in their own little world, swinging their arms, lifting their legs, and generally getting acquainted with themselves. So that's why this stage is called first habits and primary circular reaction. First habits, in other words, they've gained control of their reflexes, and primary circular reaction, aka repeating actions that involve their own bodies. They have learned that they have bodily autonomy. The third substage is secondary circular reactions. Since primary referred to the baby's interest in themselves, the word secondary refers to their interest in other things and people. In secondary circular reactions, actions are repeated because of their consequences. The baby might happen to have a rattle in his hand when he waves his arm. Ooh, the rattle made an interesting sound. Let's do that again. Ooh, when I reached up and accidentally smacked this toy hanging over my head, the pieces spun around. Let's do that again. I smiled at this uh, person. You know, I smiled at this person who uh, you know was looking at me, and they smiled back. Let's do that again and again and again and again. They have learned that actions have fascinating consequences, and they are in the zone. Between eight to twelve months, babies enter substage four coordination of secondary circular reactions. Now, babies are starting to know what they want and they are coordinating their actions to meet their goals. I see that thing on the table and I want it. I'm going to crawl over there, pull myself up, and reach for it. They've learned how to do all three of those actions and now they can combine them to get at something that they want. It's very much time to baby-proof your home if you haven't already. According to my grandparents, around this age, I would do this thing where if I wanted them to wake up, I was able to reach out of my crib, grab the edge of their blanket, and pull on it until I had completely uncovered them. They weren't able to move the crib further away, so I essentially became their alarm clock. By the way, if you think that you can just stop a baby from trying to get your phone or keys by sticking it in your pocket or purse, that only works until around this stage. At about this stage, babies developed what's called object permanence, the understanding that things continue to exist even when you can't see them or hear them. Before around eight or nine months of age, if this baby wanted this stuffed animal, you could just block her view of it, and she would basically act like it didn't exist anymore. She won't try to look for it. Poof, it's gone. That's why peekaboo is entertaining to them, because you keep disappearing and reappearing. What a magic trick. But at around eight or nine months, something clicks for them. If you block this baby's view of the stuffed animal, she'll know it's still there, and so she'll keep trying to get to it. She'll reach around the partition to grab it, or if she wants the phone that's in your pocket, she'll keep trying to get at your pocket. So yeah, baby-proofing. The fifth substage, tertiary circular reactions, novelty, and curiosity, develops between a year and a year and a half. 
Tertiary circular reactions are schemes in which the infant purposely explores new possibilities with objects, <clears throat> continually doing new things to them and exploring the results. They become like little scientists. For example, when playing with blocks, the child might stack them, bang them together, slide them across the floor, drop them over the edge of the couch, throw them out the car window. The possibilities are endless as far as they're concerned. And they're not trying to make you angry. They're not trying to misbehave or make your life harder. This is just the stage that their brain is in. And right now, going, hmm, I wonder what would happen if I did this, is how they experience it and how they experiment with new behavior. Obviously, if they're doing something dangerous or harmful, you'll need to stop them and redirect them to a different activity. But keep your cool while you're doing it. As we'll discuss in another chapter, they are learning their emotional regulation skills from you. The final substage of the sensory motor period is internalization of schemes. So between a year and a half and two years old, toddlers start to gain a sense of symbolism and imitation. Maybe they've seen mommy and daddy speaking on the phone lots of times. And they don't have a phone, but they can pretend that the hairbrush is a phone and start quote unquote talking to someone on it. They know it's not a phone, but now they're capable of pretending that it's a phone. They might witness a playmate having a temper tantrum at daycare, and then the next day they remember it and they throw a tantrum themselves. They learn to pretend and imitate. So here are all the substages in chart form in case you want to pause and look back over those. In the next video, we will cover the pre-operational stage.